Hi, in this particular video we're going to be looking at uh, compound interest, or at least that's what it used to be called. It's now called growth and decay. It's the same questions, there's still compound interest and compound depreciation questions, but we're going to work through this in the next uh, couple of videos in this particular playlist. I hope it's useful to you. As always, please do stop the video, have a go at the question, and then compare your solution. I look forward to seeing you inside the video. Hi, we're going to be having a look at the first three questions on this particular worksheet. Um, and if you go ahead and click on the link below in the description, you'll be able to download this worksheet from my website, which is 3minutemaths.co.uk. Have a go at each of the questions and then compare your solutions. OK, so the first one is George invested 3,200 in a savings account for three years. He's paid compound interest rate at three and a half percent per annum how much is in his account after three years okay well I would always advocate that you write the formula down um, and with all of these I'm going to be doing exactly the same that total equals original times multiplier to the value of n okay now n is the number of years multiplier is the interest rate and original is the original 3200 so let's just put those numbers into place so 3200 multiplied by now the multiplier now bearing in mind it's compound interest at a rate of one at 3.5 uh, percent per annum so basically each year he's going to get 103.5 percent OK, that's the rate of interest he's got. Well, we can't really very easily work with percentages in this kind of question. So what we do is we convert it to the decimal equivalent. And the decimal equivalent of that is 1.035. OK, hopefully you're OK with that because this basically means out of 100. So it's the same as saying divide by 100 as a fraction move the decimal point two places, that's going to give you 1.035. OK, and then N, as I mentioned before, is the number of years, which is three. If I put that into a calculator at the end of the three year period, it's going to have 3547.8972. Now, for the purposes of this, I'm actually going to round it up to the nearest penny, so that's going to be £3,547.90p as my particular answer. However, in reality, I would imagine the banks actually do round down. I'm not entirely sure on that one, but I think that they do. OK, so number two then um, out of these questions is going to be Tony invested £4,500. And this particular one, similar sort of question, but we're actually going to work out the amount of interest that Tony only got. So again, as before, I'm going to write the formula and I really advocate for students as far as possible to always write the formula down. Now, the reason that is, is because it really helps you to remember um, what it is you're doing with each of these questions. Um, I probably write this same formula maybe a few hundred times over the year. I could probably do it in my sleep. Uh, it's really important and it's always very much in the forefront of my mind every time I must come across these sorts of questions, as it is with all the other uh, types of formulas we need to remember for GCSE maths. OK, so the original is 4,500. Now, the multiplier, bearing in mind, as we said before, it's going to be 104% because it's compound interest. So 100% is basically what you give the bank and they give you 4% on top of that. The decimal equivalent of 104% is 1.04. And N in this particular case, again, is another three years. Pop that into a calculator and I'm going to get 5061.89 to the nearest penny. OK, so we've got to be very careful with this. And yes, that's absolutely true that this is the amount which is in Tony's bank account at the end of the three year period. However, the question does ask for the total amount of interest. So very typically, these questions will be three marks. 
okay you've got to make sure that you get that extra mark at this moment you'd probably get two marks okay and all you need to do is say that the interest is the difference between what he's got at the end of three years which is this take away what he started with which is four and a half thousand so the interest is going to be uh, 561 pounds and 89p okay and that would answer this particular question okay hopefully that's all right for you we're about four five minutes into the video so i'm going to do question number three and then questions four through to six i'm going to do on the next video in this particular playlist okay so let's move this up a little bit okay so this is uh, Jaden. Okay, so Jaden invested £2,400 for N years in a savings account and he's paid 7.5% compound interest. Okay, at the end of the number of years, he's got this amount of money. What's the value of N? In other words, how many years has he actually left the um, money in the account? Okay, so exactly as we did before, I would use total equals original times multiplier to the power of n. Okay, now the original is going to be 2,400. Okay, my multiplier, well, it's 7.5% per annum. So again, as we did before, it's going to be 107.5%. So therefore, my multiplier is 1.075. Okay, make sure you change it to the decimal equivalent. Okay, now what we're saying is, is at the end of N years, in other words, this number here, he's going to have a total of 3, 4, Four five point five one. So really, it's just a case of trial and error. So if I put a three into here and perform this calculation, I'm working it out over three years, and over three years, okay, I'm going to get a total of two nine eight one point five one. Okay, well that's not close enough. So let's have a look at four years. OK, well, four years, all I'm going to do is put four into here. So I perform this calculation with four years there and I'm going to get 3205.13. Not quite close enough, but you know what? As soon as I put in five years, OK, at five years, I'm going to get exactly three. 445.51. So therefore, he must have left his money in the account for five years, and that would be the value of N. Okay, I hope that's been okay for you. So, um, because this is um, aimed to be short uh, videos, reminder videos, then I'm going to leave question number four and dowage it buying a camper van um, <laughs> until the next video, and we'll have a look at that. So, if you click on the next one, in the playlist that will help you take it through to the next video and I shall look forward to seeing you there. Uh, please do add a comment if you're not sure about anything and I'll always come back to you.